Today we're taking it back to 2022 and I'm going to give you my review from my personal stay at the Iberostar Selection Bavaro Suites, so stay tuned. Hi, my name is Asai. I am a travel agent and the owner of Scenic Views Travel. And here on this channel, you'll find resort reviews, tips and tricks, travel agent insider info, and everything travel related, especially to Mexico, the Caribbean, all inclusives and cruising. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so you never miss a video. Okay, so back in October of 2022, my family and I decided to take a trip to Punta Cana, Dominican Republic, and we once again chose an Iberostar Resort. I did a review of the Iberostar Selección Pariso Maya located in the Riviera Maya, Mexico, and you can view that video somewhere on the screen and down in the description box. I will make sure that I link that for you. Uh, but we decided to stay at the Ibero Star in Punta Cana because we had such a wonderful experience in Mexico that we wanted to see what Ibero Star in the Dominican had to offer. Now on this trip, it was myself, my husband, our three kids, and at the time they were six and eight and 21, I think. And then we actually also traveled with my in-laws. And the reason we selected the Dominican is because my in-laws really wanted to try going there and wanted to see what it was all about. So if you are not familiar, the Ibero Star in the Dominican Republic is a complex of, let's see, one, two, three, four, of five resorts. Now that sounds huge but it is in no way as large as the Paraiso complex in Mexico. So in the Dominican complex, you have the Dominicana and the Punta Cana, and those are the lower end. And actually they've now rebranded and named those resorts Iberostar Waves Punta Cana and Waves Dominicana. And all of those resorts are family friendly. They have amazing restaurants and fantastic rooms, including some rooms that will sleep up to five in a standard room. And then next to that, you have where we stayed, which was the Ibero Star Selection Bavaro Suites. And then almost like a resort within a resort, you could upgrade to the full level Ibero Star Bavaro Suites. Now within our resort, um, each of the rooms were in sort of villas and each villa was two levels and each level had four rooms. So a total of eight rooms, making it pretty private. And then next to the Bavaro Suites, you have the Ibero Star Grand Bavaro and that resort is adults only. So going back to our resort and a little bit about our experience, the best thing about this particular resort and staying in the Bavaro region is it is only about a 20 to 25 minute drive from the airport. And when we first arrived, the lobby was just beautiful. It has this big, huge, uh, tall thatched roof with a water fountain in the middle and it's sort of set up like a square so you have some restaurants located throughout you have the check-in desk you have the star cafe which is their 24-hour cafe i'll get into that a little bit later uh, but most of your dining facilities and everything that you need are all located right there including the buffet and the theater is even right there as well. Uh, luckily, we were able to check in very quickly and our rooms were ready, which was fantastic. And we were given rooms that were located near the pool. And the best thing about our room location was that we went right outside of our door and that's where the main walkway was from the pool to the lobby area. So it was a very quick walk, even though this resort can be spread out. And I'll show a map of the property um, here on the screen so you can see. But our walk was nice and short. It was maybe a two or three minute walk. And along this walk, they have these awesome ponds. There's lots of different wildlife to see roaming about. And it's just beautiful and so peaceful and serene. 
So one thing I do want to preface before I dive into further detail about this video is when I took this vacation, I took this as a family vacation. I did not bring my travel agent hat. So I don't have the video and photos that I would have uh, if I had done a better job. So I may So getting to our room, and unfortunately I didn't do a full walkthrough of our room. Uh, the great thing about when we got to our room is that we discovered we were located on the second floor, just right off of that main walkway. And my husband and my room was to the left, and then right next to us was where our kids stayed. So it was almost like, and we were the only two rooms up there. So it was almost like, even though the rooms were not connecting, it didn't really matter because we had our own little balcony area and it felt so private and really nice as a family. So you walk into the room and immediately to your right, you have a closet area with a full length mirror. Straight ahead, you have the bathroom. The bathrooms are updated. However, they are on the smaller side but with us having two rooms, it wasn't really a large issue. So just something to think about if you're a larger family of four trying to stay in one of these rooms, it may feel a bit cramped. So then you walk out to the bath, out of the bathroom and go to the left and it opens up into a big square room and you have the beds, bed or beds. They will have either one king bed or two double beds to your right. And then there's a small step down to a living area and there is a longer sofa and a shorter sofa, kind of like a sofa love seat combination. And you can have, uh, they're not pullouts, but you can turn the sofas into beds if the people staying on them are small enough. There's also a long um, like console that runs along the whole wall and that's where your TV is. You have all of this like desk space and um, shelving space and that's where your mini bar is located and all of that uh, stuff for your room organization. So I found the rooms to be really comfortable. I will say our room had trouble keeping up with the AC. It did feel damp um, at times and a bit humid but it was a very comfortable room and we did have our own balcony and our view was awesome. We looked out over the pool and luckily they were able to put my in-laws just right around the corner from us in the same building on the same level. So dining, I am gonna to refer to some of my notes on my phone here about dining because we didn't eat at all of the restaurants, but we did eat at most of them. Now, one thing to note about Bavaro Suites is that you do have exchange privileges with restaurants, well, everything on the Punta Cana and the Dominicana side. So if you want to eat at a restaurant over there, you can. And the nice thing is that Iberostar has now eliminated the need for reservations except for certain restaurants, typically the teppanyaki. So you don't have to worry about the hassle of making all of your dining reservations as soon as you arrive to lock those in. So they offer a steakhouse. Now we did eat at the steakhouse one night and I have just decided that I am not a fan of steak in Mexico or the Caribbean. Something about it, it's just not what I'm used to. It's just not something that I prefer. So in the future, I think that we will either avoid a steakhouse or I will just look to order something different instead. So we ate at the steakhouse. And I do also want to note is something that I absolutely love about Iberostar is that there is a dress code, but it's not formal. So if you are a gentleman and you are comfortable wearing nice khaki shorts and a polo or a button up or something like that, that's really all you need. They do require nice sandals, not flip-flops, or a closed-toed shoe, but that is about it. Um, now, what's interesting is I'm actually looking at the steakhouse dress code, and it actually says formal for men. And if that's the case, uh, that's completely different than when we stayed there. So they have the steakhouse, they have the Japanese teppanyaki restaurant, which we did eat at, and it's always a fun show. and. 
myself and my kids absolutely love Asian food. So this is always a no-brainer. So right now they do require reservations and that reservation should be made upon arrival. You of course have the buffet and the buffet is going to be open breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day. And they do a wonderful job. Their service is fantastic. The buffet is open air, but it's set along this pond uh, near the lobby and it's just beautiful and it's so quiet and the way that the breeze comes in and the fans and everything, it's very comfortable. But they have an omelet station, they have all kinds of pastries that you could need, really anything you could think of. And then we have Il Forno, the Italian restaurant. The Italian restaurant was great for everybody else. I unfortunately did not enjoy my meal. I ordered a lasagna and it was just a little bit mushy for my taste. I should have, in retrospect, ordered something different, but everybody else enjoyed their meal at the Italian restaurant. There is also a Mexican restaurant. This is another open air uh, restaurant. And when we were there, they actually also opened up a lunch buffet there. I'm not sure if they still do, but it was really nice on certain days to just be able to go right to the Mexican restaurant buffet, which serves really a little bit of everything because it's located right by the pool and the beach. So you don't have to go all the way back to the lobby. But the Mexican restaurant was delicious. I know we ordered uh, tableside guacamole. That was awesome. My kids love guacamole. We got some tortilla soup that was amazing. And then of course the different taco dishes and things that we had were just wonderful. There is also La Dorada Greek restaurant and don't sleep on this one. This actually wound up being my favorite restaurant in addition to some of my family members, favorite restaurants of the entire week. They actually serve a whole Dorado fish that some of our party enjoyed. Everything that we sampled there and tasted there was amazing. And I would have eaten there again if we had had the time. Okay, and then there's also the French restaurant, uh, uh, Bistro La Coupole, maybe. I took French in high school, but don't quote me on that. Uh, we actually didn't eat at this restaurant. I'm not quite sure why. I think maybe res uh, reservations were not available at the time or we just didn't have enough days to eat there. Uh, I would have loved to have tried it. So if you've eaten there, let me know in the comments. So in addition to all of those great restaurants and your options for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you have the 24-hour Star Cafe, which makes gourmet-ish, uh, coffee, tea, and they also offer little snacks and pastries and cookies and things like that, cakes and cookies, and they have little sandwiches that you can take if you just need a little bite, or maybe you're heading out the door for an excursion and you wanna bring a little snack along, something like that. So that is an option. And then I think one of my family's favorite things was there is an ice cream shop right between the main pool and the kids' pool and it is open until I think three or four o'clock in the day and you can get as much ice cream as you want and it is delicious. And in addition to that, right by the pool, between the pool and the beach is the little beach grill and there they serve beach classics like burgers and hot dogs and nachos and french fries and quick and easy things. Just come up and grab whatever you want. Make sure you guys stay tuned to this video also because at the end, I'm gonna reveal our next big trip that we're gonna be taking. So stay tuned to the end of this video for that announcement. Okay, activities and entertainment. I will say right up front, I was a little bit disappointed in the amount of activities and entertainment at this resort especially when comparing it to what was offered at the Pareso um, complex in Mexico back in 2021. Yes, they offered daily activities. Yes, they offered nightly entertainment, but it just wasn't on the same scale as the Pareso complex. So for example, every day at the Pareso complex, usually around lunchtime and three or four o'clock in the afternoon, they would do what they call their crazy game. Usually one at the beach and then one at the pool. And this is where they would pull adults, well, and kids too, 
but to do something really silly to compete for like a t-shirt or a hat and it's just fun. Um, however, I didn't notice anything like that at the Bavaro Suites. There was plenty of music. Every day, my mother-in-law did uh, the water aerobics, which usually led into a conga line, which usually led to some kind of dance lesson, and I would skip out on the dance lesson. Outside of that, they did offer things like archery and volleyball and I'm not even sure what else. And at night, there was a show or some kind of entertainment every night. However, sometimes the entertainment was just a band and not a big production like we were kind of used to. There is a separate theater at Bavaro Suites and one for the Dominicana and Punta Cana. And one night we did go over to that area to watch a show. I think in hindsight, we may have tried to flip flop each night just to see what else was offered. But we did have fun. We did go to the shows every night. My husband and my father-in-law were both definitely pulled onto stage to do some silly things. My husband did a Michael Jackson impression that he was forced to do. And my father-in-law wound up competing and was top four in the Mr. Ibero Star contest, which still brings us laughs to this day. It was hysterical and he had so much fun. However, he still says he will never get into another conga line again. That's how it all started. Now, outside of activities and entertainment, of course, they have the pool, and it's really just one big giant pool. There is a swim up bar and a fun little uh, bridge that you can swim under that kind of connects the two pool areas. The pool is huge. There's a much more shallow section. There's a very deep section that my kids loved swimming in. And then right, one of the best things about this resort, especially if you have kids, is that right next to the main pool is a kids water park feature thing. We called it the pirate ship. It kind of looks like a ship. It's got lots of slides, spraying water. It's got the bucket, the whole nine yards. And the best thing was that it was right by the main pool. So I could see my kids from my spot in the main pool and know that they were having fun and they could flip flop back and forth between whatever experience that they wanted. So let's talk about my favorite aspect of this resort and that is the beach. Bavaro Beach is one of the most beautiful beaches that I've ever been to and the beach far surpasses what I found at Paraiso in Mexico for a number of reasons. Now, I will be clear, we visited in October and that is typically when things seem to be a bit calmer and the sargasm or seaweed tends to be much less pronounced. We did have a little bit of seaweed here and there. The resort did a fantastic job of cleaning the beaches and keeping it clean as much as they could. But one of my kids' absolute favorite things to do was to take our tubes, which yes, I always recommend bring some kind of float or something with you to the resort. And they would take their tubes and floats out into the water and their snorkel goggles and do what my son liked to call scuba diving. Yes, scuba diving. And they just would swim and dive to the bottom and swim and dive to the bottom. It was maybe, seven or eight feet deep at one point. We didn't really see any fish or have anything else to look at, but my son did amazingly find a Dominican peso coin in the water. When he pulled it out, I was so excited to see what year it was from and found that it was only about a year old. <laughs> so, But that was probably one of my kids' favorite things to do on the beach was just to be in the water. It was calm enough to float and just sit back and relax. So some of the special things that this resort did for us during our stay, nothing too wild and crazy, but here are just a couple special moments. When we did check into our room and we got to our room, there was a banner across the front just designating that we were returning guests and welcoming us back. We did have a small gift in our room of a small bottle of rum and some Dominican coffee that we could take home with us. We were also given two plastic water bottles in our room that we could fill up with water and take around the resort with us. 
and that was just a really nice special touch. We also took the time since we had our whole family with my in-laws together to have some family portraits taken. We just used an on-site photographer. He did a wonderful job and I definitely recommend having your photos taken there if you want some special moments captured. These are some of my favorite photos from that vacation. Okay, let's break down a couple of the pros and cons. Some of the pros of this resort are that number one, it is family friendly. Number two, it is close to the airport. It's only about a 20 to 25 minute drive. So you are on your vacation like that. Uh, number three, I found the food to be very good for the most part. I just didn't really care for a couple of my personal meals, but I tasted some other meals and I thought that they were delicious. And number three, I loved how the kids pool was right next to the main pool. And number four, I loved our location of our room because we were right next to the pool and the beach and we could take a very short walk straight down the walkway to the lobby. So mobility wise, it worked very well in my in-laws favor as they are um, in their early 70s during that trip. Some of the cons of this resort, and I think that it's more of a Dominican thing, are that the service is a little bit slow. They tend to work on Dominican time. There is definitely a bit of a language barrier, and I do speak some Spanish. I've been working on Duolingo now for the past probably nearly three years. So I'm much more advanced now than I was back then but there was definitely a big language barrier even when just ordering a drink uh, one of the bartenders wasn't sure what pineapple it was so definitely download google translate and you will be just fine staying here and number three was just that our room definitely didn't stay very cold and this does seem to be a common complaint at this resort but overall we were very comfortable and we made it work and number four for a con was that I did think that the entertainment was lacking a bit. It just wasn't as impressive as its property in Paraiso, in Mexico. And I think that they could definitely do a little bit more to improve on their... Uh, at the end of the day, we are pretty easy travelers. We just like to go and have a good time and anything that may be an issue. I just kind of let it roll off of my back and it doesn't bother me. And I think that that's the best way to travel because you can take anything that's thrown at you and kind of roll with the punches no matter what. So overall, we had a wonderful stay at the Ibero Star Selección Bavaro Suites in Punta Cana, Dominican Republic. This is a resort that I would consider going back to because it is a bit larger. You do have all of the other restaurants from the next door sister properties that you can visit and all of their facilities. And the beach is just spectacular. And in my opinion, the beach did outweigh some of the negatives. So this resort, I would definitely recommend it to families. I think it's also a really great option for multi-gen trips like we did, myself and our family. You know, we had the grandkids, us and the grandparents all together. And anybody who really wants a great beach and wants to be close to the airport and is maybe on a little bit more of a moderate budget, this is definitely a resort that I would recommend for you. So with all of that said, let's get into our big announcement of our upcoming trip. We are going to be leaving at the end of September and staying in the first week of October. We are going to Ibero Star again. And I kind of went back and forth on where to go. At the end of the day, we wound up selecting the Ibero Star Selección Hacienda Dominicus. We are staying in the Dominican Republic again. This time we will be on the southern end of the island on the Caribbean Sea instead of the Atlantic Ocean. So I recorded that video a couple weeks ago and some things have changed. I don't mind my messy house, but we are no longer going to the Iber Star Selection Hacienda Dominicus. We have actually just changed our reservation 
and we are now going to the Dreams Flora Resort. And there are a few reasons why we decided to make this change. Uh, number one, I found a great rate, awesome, super excited for that. Number two, it's a much newer resort. It only opened about a year and a half ago. And number three, we wanted to try something different. We've only stayed at Iberostar Star Resorts, and this is a chance to give a different resort another try. So I can't wait to bring you all of my footage from Dreams Flora coming up shortly. Um, at this point in recording, we leave in just about, just under two weeks. So stay tuned for those videos. Now, back to the original one. So stay tuned in the next coming months for our videos on that resort and our review. So if you enjoyed this video or found it informative, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. I am a travel agent, so if you would like help booking this resort or any other resort in Mexico or the Caribbean or considering a cruise, please contact me. The link to my information is down in the description box. I hope you all have a great day and I will talk to you guys in the next one. See ya.